May the words of my mouth and the meditation of thy heart be always acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Back in January of 1983, my fraternal grandmother died. I was very close to my granny, and her loss, well, it was a very great blow to me. All these years later, her loss, although tempered by time, remains keenly felt. The truth is that it was her death that sent me off on a search for meaning in this life. Not simply ultimate meaning at that time, but any meaning, any meaning to this life whatsoever is what I was after. But the truth is it didn't take very long for my considerations to turn to the questions of God. So I decided that I would visit different parish churches that were around of varying descriptions, since I only knew what the already turbulent Episcopal Church had to offer. It was the early 80s, and that amounted to the stuff of a culture war that was heating up and would soon get underway nationwide. I was looking for things that were much, much more elemental than, than that. You know, the real stuff of God. And so, I visited a bunch of Protestant churches, perhaps providentially. One of the very first ones I visited was a place where a bunch of well-fed folks gathered together and they sleepily listened to their polyester-clad preacher tell them that he was so glad that he had a place that he could come every Sunday morning to escape reality. No one else in the congregation seemed at all phased by the preacher's words, but they hit me with a force so great that it was as if a nine-pound sledgehammer had hit me right between the eyes. Escape reality? Really? I was looking for reality, and I didn't know why the rest of those people gathered there were, were there. I didn't know why they were there at all, but I was there to find reality and not to escape it. Now, I have absolutely no idea what else the preacher said that day, but the truth is, more than four decades later, I haven't been able to, hit, to shake his admission that the church, such as he knew it, was principally a mechanism by which we escape reality. Now let me contrast that, that finding that I had then, with this morning's lections here in the only church that really is church. In case you just happened in this morning, in case you were just stumbling by and have been taken unawares, this place here that we call St. Hermann's is a parish of the one holy Catholic and apostolic church that we call Christian Orthodoxy. This is a place of reality where on any given Sunday morning or for any other day for that matter, you can find the cure to the unre unreality of the rest of your life that you've lived out there in the world for the rest of the week. For instance, this morning we've been presented with four principal lections. They are an epistle and a gospel for the 35th Sunday after Pentecost, and an epistle and a gospel for the New Russian Martyrs and Confessors. And I will distill the primary teachings of each one of those lessons down into just a sentence or two. The epistle for this Sunday, 1 Timothy 1, 15 through 17, teaches us that Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. Does that sound familiar to anyone? Yeah, that's one of our prayers that we pray every week before coming to the, to the chalice. 
In our gospel lesson, St. Luke 18, 35 through 43 teaches us that even a lowly beggar can be healed by Jesus if his faith is, faith is great enough and if he refuses to be stymied by the crowd that surrounds him telling him to shut up. Stop looking for Jesus. Come over here into unreality. Don't go to reality. Has anyone ever experienced that in your life? Shut up. Don't go after Jesus. Our epistle for the new Russian martyrs and confessors this morning is Romans 8, 28 through 39, reveals that if we truly love God and we're called according to his purpose, then everything really will work out all right for us. These souls who have been predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, and since they were therefore called, they will first be justified, and then they will be glorified. The gospel lesson, St. Luke 21, 12 through 19, tells us that before the end times come, those who actually truly live for Christ will have hands laid upon them and will be persecuted because they are the most real things in this place of unreality. Authentic Christians will be delivered up to the authorities and sent to prisons where they really shouldn't worry about what they should say to their accusers because God will give them wisdom. He will put it in their mouth so that no matter what happens after that, their adversaries will never be able to contradict them. These Christians will be betrayed and turned over into the authorities by their parents, their brothers, their relatives, and their friends. And some of them will be put to death for the sake of the name of Christ. Even then, though, there will not be any cause for worry or despair, because even though they're put to death, the scripture teaches us that not one hair on the, the heads of these martyrs will be lost. Not one hair will be lost. So, welcome to reality, my friends. You just happen to be living in a time when these words are more contemporary than at any time since they were written nearly 2,000 years ago. And so the question becomes, what do we do with all of this? And the answer is that we live into it. We live into it fully. You see, your job is to become more and more real each day that the sun comes up. And you do that by conforming yourself to the living image of Christ more and more each day. The time for being anonymous Christians, that has passed away. We can no longer afford that. Rather, we must take the realness of Christ out into an increasingly unreal world each day. And we do that once again by fully living in Christ. And if you do that, and if you live in peace with the rest of the world, it won't take long for the rest of the world to bump into you. And so let me give you an example of that that happened just this past Friday afternoon. You know, over the past year or so, many of you know that I've taken up the hobby of spending a lot of time in doctor's offices. <laughs> it's very expensive and it's no fun at all. And so I recommend that you don't take up that hobby until you're absolutely forced to. And so I had just finished my appointment with the doctor when I was walking out toward the lobby and I was spied by this woman and she just stared at me. She just stopped and stared at me. And so I stopped. I didn't know if I was in danger or not. And she looked at me and she finally broke the silence and said, what are you? <laughs> she said, are you a Catholic priest, an Episcopalian? I said, no, I'm an Orthodox priest. Are, are you familiar with Orthodoxy? And she said, well, a little, I guess. Well, okay, that's good. What is your religious tradition? Well, Methodist, I, I'm a Methodist now, but I guess just, just, just a Protestant, that's all. 
Well, we're, we're all united, though. And I asked, united? I, I understand that the Methodists have been going through quite a time of late. And she said, oh, no, 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 not us. You see, we're, we're united. That means that we love the gays. Do you love the gays? And I said, well, absolutely. Uh, we love all people. You see, we learn in the pages of Scripture that it's God's will for us that all men turn from their wickedness and live. We all have a choice. We can come to Christ's body, the church, take up our cross and follow him by struggling to become more Christ-like each day. We can either do that or we can choose to turn away from Christ by remaining in our sins and making this perishing world our home. And the woman thrust her clenched fist up into the air and shouted, Hallelujah! <laughs> I, I was pretty surprised by that reaction. And so I said, Hallelujah indeed. <laughs> so we can all live with Christ into eternity. But to do that, one fine day, we must this very day put away our sins and live a life of repentance day by day. The lady told me that she would like to talk to me some more, but just as she said that, the receptionist called her back for her appointment. And so I gave her my card so we could talk. And as she made her way back to the examining room, she turned her head over her shoulder and asked, are you, are you, are you Greek Orthodox? And I said, no, I'm Russian Orthodox. And she said, ooh, that's something else really interesting we can talk about. And I said, yes. We can talk about that too, you know? As she disappeared down the hallway, I, I thought to myself, I, I hope she does call me, and, and I do. I hope she calls. I imagine, though, that she'll probably mention this strange Russian Orthodox priest that she met to her preacher sometime this very morning. And I'm confident that her preacher will likely direct her to her pew because they need to get busy escaping the reality instead of talking about her brush with merely embracing it just this past Friday. So I'm telling you all, I'm telling you all this morning, this is a convert church. Most of us weren't born into orthodoxy. That doesn't matter. It doesn't matter where you came from. It just matters that you're here now. Thanks. Thanks be to God that you're here now. Thank you that we've come home. Thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus, that we've found our place. So you can put away all of that other stuff that you've heard. You can put away all of that unreality. And this morning, if you haven't fully done it yet, you begin living fully into the reality of the life of and the love and the light that is Jesus Christ please please come along it's going to be a bumpy ride but I guarantee you that it'll be worth it it's time it's time for us to renounce everything that we once were because this is the only thing left this is the only thing that really matters because this is the only thing that is really real We need to start working on it because one day our hope and our prayer is that we come when we come into the next world, we will be found indistinguishable from our Lord and our Master, Jesus Christ. In his holy name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God bless you, Father Mark. Thank you.